Hey, Brandon, welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in, man. We got a great show today. Jason DiRienzo, my podcast co-host of the Devi to Dynasty football podcast. Him and I, we're going to talk about six college players through week two of the college football season who are on the rise, who could potentially be dynasty assets on our future fantasy football team. So um, we're going to talk about six players here. Um, if you play fantasy football, you play dynasty football, and you're looking for a channel here on YouTube that is going to give you an early glimpse of future assets uh, that you could be drafting in your rookie drafts, hit that subscribe button. So we're going to talk about six players here. This is a recording from our podcast. Enjoy the show. <laughs> All right, Jason, are you ready to talk about our Devi stock risers this week? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so the first guy I want to talk about, um, all three guys that I'm going to talk about here tonight, I've got films on the YouTube channel. So um, first guy I'm going to talk about is Kansas running back Devin Neal. All right, um, got you know he ran for 10 carries, 120 yards, and a touchdown. Had four receptions for 47 yards. Um, you know, good size. Um, but I'll tell you what I really liked, if you go out and watch the film on the channel, is he showed good patience, good vision. And I have this saying when it comes to footwork with running backs, either you got sweet feet or beat feet, but man, he had some really sweet feet in this game. I mean, I like the way he pressed the line of scrimmage. He, he, he made linebackers come up and then he, you know, laterally moved and accelerated down the field. It was a really, really good by Devin Neal, a really great game. Um, and on the season right now, he's averaging 7.2 uh, yards week one, uh, 12 uh, yards per carry uh, week two. And I know again, it's not against the best competition. I mean, Illinois this week, was was pretty good but you know, Devin Neal again this whole running back class coming out he's a 2024 prospect as well um I'm not going to be surprised to see Devin Neal slowly work his way maybe up the ranks if he continues to play I mean we've talked about him on the podcast you know many times Jason before you know yeah. you know year year and a half ago last year was a down year for him but we had a lot of good uh you know back in 2021 we were expecting good things him coming out of high school but you know stock up for Devin Neal I think he's had two really good games and he's going to get fed the rock there in Kansas I'm, I'm excited to see him continue to do well this year and absolutely. And this is a guy that you've liked for quite a while now. So mm -hmm. it's got to be probably pretty rewarding for you to see him do so well, yeah, especially like this early in the season. Uh, yeah. So my guy's going to be, I talked about a little bit, but Audric estimate to me, I mean, 5'11", 227, and just can you, continues to develop and prove me wrong of what I thought he would be as far as maybe an NFL prospect. Uh, I like everything I've seen from him. I've talked about him a, a little bit uh, during my uh, game breakdown, but I like the size, the athleticism. He showed off great speed on that long run. I think he got to talk for 20 miles an hour. Uh, fluid nature as far as his movement ability and just tenacious as can be between the tackles. And Notre Dame absolutely loves this kid. And we saw in week one that he can catch the ball pretty well. And so Audric estimate to me is definitely on the rise. Uh, already got four touchdowns uh, or this early in the season. Yeah, that that's a really good call. I mean, he, he's definitely. I mean, Mel Kuyper has him number five on his uh, current 2024 mm -hmm. ranking. So, um, okay. you know, he's definitely on the radar of uh, the NFL draft community already. Uh, the, my second wow. stock riser yeah. I want to talk about um, is a Marion Hampton from North Carolina. He has risen from the Debbie Ashes. Um, Last year, he was a huge disappointment his freshman season. We were thinking that he was going to be the guy to take over for Javonta Williams in that backfield. Kind of faded off towards the end of the season. Um, but I'll tell you what, six foot, 220 yards. I've got, a, I've got a nickname for him. He is the yards after contact monster. So in this game, he had 26 carries this week against Appalachian State. And I know it's not great competition. I get it. But if you watch the film again, I put a film on the YouTube channel here. Go check it out. 26 carries, 234 yards, three touchdowns. He only caught one ball for 10 yards, and it was like a dump-off pass because Drake May was in trouble. It wasn't like he was really targeted. So this is not something I think he brings to the table as far as you know, his pass catching, and we all like that in our running backs, I know. But I'll tell you what, 116 yards after contact, I just peaked on PFF because you watch the film. Uh, shit, I mean, he's getting three or four or five yards – you know, dragging tacklers after contact. So I was very curious to see, you know, what his yards after contact was. So out of his 234 yards, 116 of that came with yards after contact. Guy runs hard with pad level. He just, he has good elusiveness. He showed some sweet feet. He showed some lateral ability. Um, kind of like a one cut, you know, up the field runner. He's not going to be a guy that's going to make a lot of people miss, but I'll, I'll tell you what, he's got the contact balance. He's got the physicality. He just looks like an NFL running back to me. Um, 
he, he really does. It, it was an imp- it was an impressive performance, and I think now he got the majority of the carries. I think British Brooks Brooks must, must have been hurt or something because he didn't he wasn't on the stat line. But I don't know. After this game, I might see Hampton getting getting fed the ball, and that's kind of what we want out of that North Carolina backfield is just one guy getting the majority of the carries. So Hampton is a stock up for me. Yeah, I like that call a lot. We were hoping for him to kind of make that rise. Uh, my next guy is going to be Lenore Sellers uh, coming out of the Gamecocks. And yes, the Gamecocks played against Furman. Uh, but Sellers, man, he came in late in that game and just had a beautiful, beautiful bomb for over 50 yards. That. Perfectly placed in the end zone. And you just see the arm strength on display. He's 6'3", 245. He has a composite four-star coming out. Um, I think that once Spencer Rattler goes on to the NFL, Sellers is going to be a guy that we are going to be excited to watch. And uh, as much as I don't have enough to really judge his development right now, that, that flash has already got me intrigued. So I think Sellers is going to be on the rise. Yeah, he was a hot commodity in our supplemental C2C drafts. I mean, he was going in round yeah, six or seven, yep. you know, so I think there was some buzz around him. And I don't think he was a top 20 prospect coming out of high school, if I remember correctly. He wasn't in that top think, echelon. Think, of play. Composite wise, I think he was like maybe 17, 18, but 18, like, yeah, but right. I think he was in the 30s overall, like right. just in general. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. My, my third Debbie, uh, stock up player I want to talk about is someone we mentioned briefly before is Holden Stays. Is that how you say his name? Stays? Stays? Stays. Yep. Stays. Yep. yep. Stays. So again, I got easy to make a nice newspaper tagline with this kid. Yeah, exactly. So I got, I just put a <laughs> film out on the YouTube channel. Uh, so go check that out as well. Uh, six foot four, 242. He's a sophomore. Wasn't very productive last year. Only had one reception. Um, or, or no, he had like two or three receptions last year, but this year, um, you know, had a one reception week one this week, four receptions, 115 yards, two touchdowns. Um, certainly impressive. And we know Notre Dame likes to put uh, tight ends, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in the NFL. So early jump on here. His name, I don't see, d- does not remember him getting drafted in C2C supplemental drafts. And he was not a high targeted player, even as a freshman last year. But you go watch the film, and you alluded to it a little earlier here on the podcast, is that. He showed some athletic ability, and that's what we're looking for. I mean, he they, he was used out of the out of the backfield um, on short passes, um, but he had. Did you see that sideline run he had down the right hand oh, yeah. side? You know, he was yeah. kind of getting knocked off. That showed that athleticism. You know, off balance. You know, running down the sideline. But um, the coach got a lot of questions from the media after week one. Where are the tight ends? That's part of you know the Notre Dame you know game plan. And he said we're gonna you know basically you know. Re, you know, make that a priority in week two, and he certainly did. But you know, Holden stays is, is a um, you know, again, tight ends aren't exciting for a lot of people in Debbie, but you know, he's a he's a player I think on the rise. Absolutely, I, th- I think that's a great call. And if you watch the game, it's easy to get excited about a kid like this. Uh, my last guy I alluded to when I was doing the game breakdown on the podcast, and that is going to be Marshawn Lloyd at USC. I mean, finally, you know, I, I know a majority of people that probably listen to this podcast have some sort of a share or shares of Marshawn Lloyd and have been patiently waiting. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about what the value that he can bring because it's not like he's had a 100-yard game yet. I think he had like 40 yards the first game, and he's been in the 70s ever since. But you see the flashes of the athleticism that gets you excited about his possible next-level transition. And, uh, you know, it started with the spring game with that pass and seeing the fluid agility of a healthy Marshawn Lloyd. And they definitely want to try to make him a focal point of the offense, uh, a Caleb Williams led offense. And that is going to be a lot of fun. And I think uh, Marshall Lloyd is going to get a lot more run as the season progresses. So uh, buckle up. This is going to be a fun ride. And I think Marshall Lloyd is on the rise. Yeah, I hope so because I have so many shares from two years ago drafting him in my C D C stuff. So much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, you know, and he got he was just such a good player. And that ACL tears, those early yeah. ACL tears are, are are tough for for these kids coming out of college. But love it, man. Those are six great Debbie risers, um, you know, as we head into week three of the college football season.